Mainstream science, despite all of its claims of objectivity and despite the fact it lays claim to the truth, is itself a religion. Science with a capital S places itself on a pedestal and assures everyone that it has dispassionately arrived at its conclusions. Meanwhile, however, it's full of trickery and fraud designed to manipulate the unquestioning masses and heap wealth and power on the few extremely wealthy psychopaths interested in total control over the world. The capital S science about which we will focus has a sacred nature to it, an above question mentality that cannot withstand logical informed opposition. Currently, this is the only science tolerated by the control system, which uses this religion of science to deceive the public and murder hundreds of thousands per year. Big S science is one of the corporatocracy's biggest tools of deception. The practice of normal science as a process of intelligent inquiry has been almost completely replaced by the sacred science which is a religion that demands unquestioning acceptance and obedience to its dictates. We could look at a plethora of examples of the dictates of this religion, causing people to make bad decisions which endangers their health and the existence of their entire way of life. For example, seducing people to eat GMO foods that contain life-altering and life-threatening technology as a result of the religion of science. Accepting the fallacy that man-made global warming is happening and threatening the planet is causing consternation throughout the world, and coincidentally depriving third world countries of energy which could afford them the ability to move out of desperation. We could mention a myriad of other frauds based on the inability to question this holy doctrine of sacred science. There are the frauds of energy dependency, overpopulation, the evolution of one physical species to another, and many others. But let's focus on examples that are costing thousands of lives on a daily basis. The sacred scientific doctrine has created a fake medical community as the marketing arm of their major eugenics operation, Big Pharma. Big Pharma is the force behind Western medicine. In fact, it's the reason it was invented and the Rockefeller oil dynasty is the force behind it all. With its smorgasbord of synthetic drugs, vaccines, surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation, Western medicine, or allopathy, has earned the dubious honor of killing hundreds of thousands of people every year, who for one reason or another are kneeling down to the false god of sacred science. A 2000 study by Dr. Barbara Starfield, MD, found that allopathy kills 225,000 per year in the U.S., while in 2003, a study by Dr. Gary Knoll, MD, and others found that allopathy kills 783,000 per year in the U.S. Former Big Pharma reps, esteemed medical journal editors, and even insider governmental scientists have all confessed the shocking truth that a large amount of the published scientific data out there is fraudulent and simply can't be trusted. Here is a list of the top 10 tricks used by the priests of religion of science to undo the normal scientific process and deceive the public into behaving in a way that is not in their best interests and indeed will likely at some point kill them. Number one, 
substituting synthetic for natural versions of a nutrient. When the corporatocracy wants a result skewed against an unpatentable natural solution, and in favor of one of their patentable products, they simply use the synthetic and less potent version of that nutrient in the study and find that it is ineffective. Sacred science only believes in patentable products. Number two, isolating nutrients to remove their power of synergy. Nature doesn't work like this. Plants are complex organisms. Some are composed of hundreds of different phytonutrients which work together synergistically to produce wellness in the human body. Real science would test the whole plant open-mindedly in a variety of ways to try to discover and unlock the secret to its healing potential. Number three, contaminating the tests. Then there was a case involving laetril, or amygdalin, commonly called vitamin B17. The NIH contaminated an already bogus pill being used in a study. The NIH refused to allow an alternative laetrile vendor to supply natural laetrile for the study so they, the NIH, could create a custom pill for the study. In creating their custom bogus laetrile pill, it was not enough for them to not have any natural laetrile in the pill. A worthless pill would not have given any patient the symptoms of cyanide poisoning. They also had to lace the pill with inorganic cyanide so that the patients would have the symptoms of cyanide poisoning. The natural cancer cure laetrile, amygdalin vitamin B17, proved that the cyanide contained in apricot kernels, apple seeds, etc., is a selective cancer cell killer. It leaves healthy cells alone because they can disable the cyanide. Again, if it isn't patentable in the religion of sacred science, it is condemned. Number four, altering the treatment plan. If sacred corporate science can't prove a natural substance itself is ineffective, then it uses the trick of altering the treatment plan so that people are not getting the correct amount of that substance. This could be as simple as making the dosage too low or too high, or combining the substance with other foods or drink which disable its healing effects, or heating it, etc. Number five, getting tricky with statistics. Mark Twain once said that there are lies, damn lies and statistics. Corporate junk science often plays around with the numbers to emphasize one thing and hide another thing. Big Biotech often does this with their GMO studies, for instance, never allowing a study to exceed 90 days, after which the deleterious effects of GMOs begin to emerge. Number six, the false worship of double-blind studies. Are double-blind studies always the gold standard? In many cases, a double-blind study makes no sense in the world. For example, how could you do a double-blind study comparing a person who refuses all orthodox cancer treatments with someone who goes through chemotherapy? It is a stupid concept because after one day, a person would know which group they were in. How can you compare chemotherapy to vitamin C in a double-blind study? The chemotherapy group would have intense pain, sickness, their hair will fall out, and so on. The vitamin C group would have no added pain, no sickness, except perhaps diarrhea, and their hair will not fall out, etc. Number seven, selecting patients favorable to the agenda. The selection protocol in determining which patients to choose for a study is important, because by carefully selecting the patients in a study, you can to a large extent control the outcome of the study. The Mayo Clinic choose a narrow range of cancers, as opposed to Pauling and Cameron, when testing the efficiency of vitamin C as a natural cancer treatment. Number eight, bribing the peer review group. A distinguished 20-year medical journal editor became so appalled with the flagrant corruption of the corporate junk science that makes up the religion of science, she declared that it was no longer possible to believe much of the clinical research that is published. The peer review process has itself become too corrupted. This is why when the puppets of the control system point to 97% of peer-reviewed science support the theory of global warming, they are likely correct. The scientific peer review process is totally owned by the religion of science and is a total fraud. Webster Keir, a prominent cancer researcher, states that, quote, in June 2002, the New England Journal of Medicine, one of the most respected medical journals, made a startling announcement. The editors declared that they were dropping their policy stipulating that authors of review articles of medical studies could not have financial ties to drug companies whose medicines were being analyzed. 
The reason? The journal could no longer find enough independent experts. Drug company gifts and consulting fees are so pervasive that in any given field, you cannot find an expert who has not been paid off in some way by the industry. So the journal settled for a new standard. Their reviewers can have received no more than $10,000 per year from companies whose work they judge. Isn't that comforting? Number nine, controlling the publicizing of the results. Most scientists are given contracts by the corporatocracy, which contain a clause forbidding them to publicize results that the funders don't like. This means that Big Pharma, Big Agra, Big Biotech, or whoever it is that has the legal right to suppress the results of any study they don't like, including being able to stop scientists from submitting such studies to a journal. Number 10. Controlling the funding and hiding the funders. An outcome is more likely to be generated when you have people expecting, or subconsciously intending, that result. On top of this, results can be bought and the true finance behind that bribery can be hidden through front groups, think tanks, shell corporations, fake grassroots, astroturf organizations, and many other means. Mainstream science, despite all of its claims of objectivity, and notwithstanding the fact it attempts to lay claim to the truth, is itself a religion. This sacred science places itself on a pedestal and assures everyone it has dispassionately arrived at its conclusions. But now you know their truth is found by using these ten tactics of deception and then demanding that their results go unquestioned, unreviewed. The 10 tricks do, of course, exist in addition to the massive category of data falsification, where corporations omit and distort results at will through all sorts of chicanery. For example, not reporting patients who suffer side effects and instead labeling them as non-compliant. The religion of sacred science is like a cancer parasiting off the host and destroying humanity's attempt for knowledge and objectivity. The time has come to expose it fully and begin to restore truth and real science.